Hey, hey, how the devil are ya? Woof, where are you order? <laughs> okay, so hope you're all well. Unfortunately, I'm not that well today. <laughs> I tested positive this morning on a lateral flow test, so boo. <laughs> Make sure you stay two meters back from your phone or whatever device you're watching on. <laughs> okay. I'm okay. I've taken some cold and flu max strengths to get me, me through this video. Um, I was going to postpone the video, but this amp came today and I was like, I'm too excited. I've got to do this video and I've got to open this because I've been waiting for this for ages now. Oh, I can't wait. So I'm not going to let COVID put me off. <clears throat> Excuse me. No. The reason I bought this amp is because I have an AV receiver and it's a good AV receiver. It's a Yamaha RX V581. And musically, it's pretty good. Um, obviously for movies and films and whatever, it's very good. But the problem is I'm using this uh, AV receiver more for music than I am for movies. Pretty much 80% of the time, I'm using it for music, playing my record CDs, you know, uh, streaming, things like that. I'm just playing music all the time. So I'm like, I really need a proper amplifier. And this is why I've ordered this PM6007 Marantz. Uh, and I hope this is gonna sound better for playing music uh, than the AV receiver. It should do, I'm, I'm imagining it will. I can't see why not. It's very highly reviewed, very highly rated, and by all accounts, an excellent amp. So anyway, I'm super excited, even though I got the COVID, okay? I'm super excited to get this open. Waiting for it for ages. So without further ado, let's spark this box open. So first of all, uh, personally I think it's a very nice looking machine. Some people say it's a bit overcrowded. P me personally, I don't. I could be being biased because I've just bought it, but I think it looks very, very nice. Now, what we got on the front here, you got your input selector. You're gonna you go from phone to CD, network tuner, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Got your uh, headphone jack here, on off button, bass, treble, and your balance left and right. A and B speakers volume here okay uh, but here you've got your source direct source direct is when you want to bypass the bass and treble it's supposed to give you a cleaner sound but that's totally up to the listener whether you think you want to do without the bass and treble that's up to you then you've got these which is interesting these filters one and two and they are indicated by being filter one is blue and filter two is purple i think this lights up here i haven't turned it on yet so i'm not sure and they give you a different sound uh depending on which sound you like uh, but it only works on digital, so optical or coaxial. It comes with a CD-ROM uh, with the instruction manual on it. Uh, you don't really need that. You, do, you can just uh, scan your phone over this here and it'll take you straight to the website where all the information is anyway. So if you haven't got a CD-ROM, don't worry about it. You've got your power lead and over here, just bear with me, you've got uh, your remote control. Looks well laid out. Everything's there you need and I'll be testing that later on. So on the back, starting from this side, you've got your phono and your ground here, if you want to connect your turntable, coaxial, two optical inputs, then you've got your audio inputs here, CD network tuner and recorder, all audio in. This is audio out, you've got your left and right, so audio in, audio out would be for maybe a tape deck, if you've still got one of those, a recordable CD player or a mini disc player, something of that elk. Uh, so you need, you need in and out to be able to record. Subwoofer, which is brilliant, because I've got a subwoofer and I do want to have the subwoofer incorporated so I've got a good 2.1 system. Got your speakers A and B left and right, okay? And then you've got remote control in. And what I like about it, it does have a detachable power lead, not one that's set in there constantly. So, so far, so good. Firstly, I'd like to apologize if you can hear chitty chitty bang bang in the background. My children and my wife are in the other room. It's still a bank holiday today in the UK. So you may hear a bit of noise coming from the door, uh, just to the side of you, okay. But I just wanted to point this out before I connected it all up, <clears throat> that if you use banana plugs, okay, you notice you can't put them in, if you're in Europe probably, 
not in all countries, <clears throat> but the reason this is, uh, these are covered up in Europe is because there are some bacon heads out there who uh, European plugs, uh, not in the UK, but European plugs tend to have two round pins that look very similar to that and will fit in there. And obviously someone at some point has put them in there and either electrocuted themselves or set fire to the house. Idiots. So they're pretty, very easy to take out. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, you can, you can, so you can either just put the wire through the hole here, okay, or take these out. These just come up very easily with your nail, like this. Pop them out, there you go. That's all there is in there. And then you can pop in, you can pop in your banana plug then, like that. Okay, so very easy to do. So on first glance, the remote looks quite comprehensive, but actually when you take a, a deeper look to it, most of the controls are for the CD player that Moran's make, which goes with this amp. So the only things that are for the amp, it actually says amp here. This is for the amp. That's the on off power for the amp. And this square here is for the amp volume, mute and source direct. The rest of it is all for the CD player. But it works fine, um, but it would have been better to maybe get a smaller remote just for the amp rather than have all these buttons on there for the CD player as well when you don't intend to get it. Chitty Chitty Bang Bang is still on. Uh, so sorry if you can hear that in the background, whatever. Now, I spent the last 45 minutes to an hour pretty, ch pretty much checking everything at this amp. So I put my, connected my record player up. I know this is not a great setup. With that on top of that, you could get feedback and stuff, but I just want to quickly try it out because if I didn't like it, I was gonna send it back. I'm not sending it back, by the way. Tried it through the TV via optical, CD player via coaxial. Uh, headphone socket I also tried. And everything sounds pretty good, really, well, not pretty good, really good. I can't find fault with any of the inputs, really. Sometimes you've got amps with a, a one weak input somewhere. Uh, but no, I mean the coaxial wasn't quite as clear, wasn't quite as good as the optical, but you'd hardly notice. Um, the headphone jack, really good. And the uh, uh, phono stage, it's very good phono stage. I mean, I play my record player through a, a Riga phono stage and it sounds just as good as that, if not better. I will do a comparison between those two at one point, so I'll look up for that video. Uh, so it's very good. The only thing I would say if it's a weakness, if it is a weakness, because someone said on Amazon in the Amazon comments that it doesn't have a lot of bass. They must have been using poor speakers or poor placement of the speakers because with my Wolftail Diamond 230 floor standards, the bass was almost overpowering. It's ridiculous. That's without the subwoofer. It was crazy bassy uh, to the point where I had to turn the bass down just a little bit. Um, so to use my subwoofer, which I want to use my subwoofer, I plugged that in, it worked fine, but I had to turn the bass right down to, to the other side, all the way down, uh, was well, that way if you're looking that way, <laughs> uh, so I could use a subwoofer and then it sounded great. So with the subwoofer it does work, but realistically you, if you've got good tower speakers, you don't really need a subwoofer. Maybe if you've got small uh, bookshelf speakers then a the subwoofer would be better, but I don't know what that guy was on about, there's no bass. Is off his nut. It's so bassy. It's crazy. Anyway, so ultimately, it's a very good machine. I can't really find fault with any of it. Uh, does it sound better than my AV receiver for playing music? Yes, it does. Uh, it's got a, a smoother top end. It doesn't roll off, um, but it's got really good mids. I think with an AV receiver, listening to music on it because it's got. It seems to have a lot of mids there. It seems a bit too much, a bit fatiguing on the ears. You could listen to music on this machine much longer than you could the AV receiver without it getting fatiguing. The bass is really articulate and tight. I couldn't grumble with that at all. Um, very impressed with the amp uh, and I'm definitely gonna keep it. Anyway, I'll give you a little sound demo now. Unfortunately, it's only gonna be uh, music from YouTube, YouTube library, uh, because I don't wanna get a copyright strike. But you know, yeah, I'm gonna use that. And I also, what I'll do, I'll make a comparison with that in another video, which I'll link up here in the description box below against my AV receiver so you can hear the difference. Anyway, thanks for watching. Enjoy the little demo and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, and don't forget, subscribe, like, all that nonsense. Bye.
had to add this little bit to the end because when I was doing the sound test, this happened. What the hell? I've never had that happen before with my Yamaha, Yamaha amp. Um, so anyway, to resolve it, I had to put a couple of little rubber foam rubber bits, cut a little bit of some foam rubber bits out and stick them on the bottom to stop it jumping around the place and dancing everywhere. So anyway, I'll have to think of a permanent solution for that. Anyway, <laughs> no base, whatever. <laughs>